My name is Jacob Kyle Chong. This is my 1990 R32 GTR. Why don't you tell us about why you chose the R32 GTR and your purchase story? Honestly, like, I'm not really a big JDM guy. Like, I like muscle cars. Like, growing up, I liked, I had, a, my first car was a 67 Camaro. So I always liked the classer, older American, you know, American cars. But I told myself, you know, if I were to get a JDM car, it would be a GTR. So I always I was looking for an R35, but you know, a 2009 goes for like $70,000 <laughs> still, with like a bunch of miles. But I always admired the R32. I didn't really know about, you know, R32s, R33s. I thought there was just R34s and then R35s until one day my neighbor pulled up in a black R32. I used to see it around and then I thought, man, that's a cool car. And then going through the history of these cars and how, you know, obviously initial D, uh, yeah. And then, um, what is it? Uh, the, the history and like, you can call other GTRs Godzilla, but honestly, this is like the only one you can call and like the history and the history it really got to me. And it's the smallest one out of all Ford Skylines. It's honest, it's the lightest one, only weighs 3,100 pounds. And then my purchase history with this car is, um, well, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It was kind of an impulsive buy. Like when I saw the ad, the ad was, um, the ad was for an hour. Like the guy literally posted it and it was for an hour. So um, the guy lived in uh, San Diego and I'm out here in the IE. So legit just gave him a phone call. I'm like I, I, I saw pictures of it and I knew it was like the one. Sometimes you see a car and then you're like, that's the one. And this was the car that was, was the one. And then uh, came down with the cash and then just bought it. It looks pretty stock and everything is pretty stock. I mean, it does, as you can see, it does have all the AC components still. It does have ABS and it does have high kiss in the back and it still works, which is crazy, which most people, they rip them out or they just, people just don't like how they drive. But, you know, it looks pretty stock so far. Only thing it has is just the Nismo strut bar. Uh, shout out to my friend for giving me that one. And then um, it's got the R35 coil packs, which it was, it was misfiring and those really helped out. And it's still on math, but as for the engine, it's a uh, built bottom end. It's uh, manly rods, pistons. It's got Airbnb head studs. Um, as for the head, it's stock. And then the turbos are upgraded. They are Garrett's. So, which is a nice upgrade because the stock ones, stock turbos tend to blow. And the oil pump is, um, oil pump is upgraded. It's got uh, N1 oil pump with uh, bill of gears in the back. So oiling's pretty good. So what about like suspension, exterior, any exterior mods, suspension, interior mods? All so the good thing about these cars is you don't have to do much to the exterior. I feel like so, uh, they come pretty nice, like out of the box. So like it just has, uh, I just put a new lip on it. And then um, what is it for? As for suspension, it's got blitz coilovers. They honestly are pretty good. Like they ride, they're not too stiff, not too soft. They ride pretty good in the canyons. These are TE37s. Um, they were white, but the previous owner did powder put them in these uh, bronze color. I believe they are 18 by nine and a half. Don't know the offset, but you can like, um, I'm planning on running bigger tires for soon. So like these are 255s, but I'll have to go like 275s. So you can run pretty big tires on these pretty, on these little, like little cars. For the interior, it's pretty much like stock. It's just, it's, um, it's stock seats, stock back seats. Um, as you can see, like, uh, if you're looking for one of these cars, like, um, honestly, like these tend to purple out, like, uh, cause a lot of people in, cause in Japan or in Australia, they just, they didn't really care about these cars. So like, they just leave them outside. They're just daily or daily commuters. But this one has like no bubble on the dash or crack dash. It does have a small one like, here. And that's what this little panel is for to cover. It has a little bubble, but honestly, it's pretty clean. It still smells like Japan. It's got that unique <laughs> smell to it. And then the only mod is just the Momo steering wheel and then the Nismo floor, ma uh, floor mats and then a little Nismo short uh, shifter and then just a can of wood. Got a little fire extinguisher back yeah, there too. Uh, <laughs> I did catch fire one time. He so, did? <laughs> well, well, one of the fuel lines broke one time. Like I was like taking it out, like I was about to go to the canyon or whatever. And then like, what is it? I turn it on and then like <laughs> I smell something and I open the engine bay and the fuel line just was like because the way the fuel line is it's underneath the alternator uh -huh. and I was spilling fuel on the alternator so ever since then I was like yeah I gotta carry a fire tree. and my last car caught on fire it didn't total it out but <laughs> I was it it caught on fire the oil line broke 
but uh yeah so i'm always like you always got to keep the fire signature yeah if you have an old car in. keep it like <laughs> honestly even if you don't have an old car maybe you might need it man or someone else might need it yeah 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 because um i filmed not to put the guy on blast but i filmed a g82 m4 and it caught fire and it completely totaled the car so if he had a fire extinguisher maybe that would have changed things yes. but let's go to the rear check out the rear yeah the rear is pretty stock there is literally nothing done to it <laughs> it's just for exhaust it is a fujitsubo exhaust um the guy did have a tome extreme but um he took it off because it was so loud but i like oh. this one it has a nice tone to it it still shoots flames so luckily um might need to get you to send a clip of that or something yeah hopefully i have a clip <laughs> i have I have one i have pictures somewhere okay yeah, yeah. picture or a clip one yeah. of the two yeah but uh yeah the rear end even if it is stock it looks really nice um i don't get to see too many r32s um this exhaust is pretty big like the muffler section is pretty big you yeah, can just see pass. it peaking on the bottom yeah but um yeah this is pretty clean uh now we just got to go for like a, a little uh drive and see how it's like So this is my first time in a R32 GTR, Oop. and these are, it's pretty nice in here, you know, how, how old is it again? It's 30 years old, okay, yeah, so it's for... a long time ago. <laughs> I like the turbo noises. It's not loud, the car's not loud, and like later on, I mean, if I keep the car, if I have it still, I want to go single, and once you put single, bro, it's like wow, <laughs> it's so loud. Like, let's yeah. do another one. Yeah, let's do another one. Why don't we talk about your ownership experience with the car like how long you've had it and then like if and if you ran into any issues or so basically i've only had it for only a year so far so yeah i've not had it that long and honestly the reliability hasn't skipped a beat i mean it is a rebuilt engine but uh with rbs you do got to be careful because depending on what you're doing like the oiling is like the main thing on these cars and like if you're tracking it like i knew people who've told me like they took it on a track day and then they blew their engine or they took it in a canyon run like oh, they're man. driving it hard and they like but i also hear like the opposite end where it's like you just take care of it and it's like it lasts forever wow. so it's like mixed reviews and like people online like they like to like you know they like to glaze the rb26 <laughs> it is a good motor like if you're comparing it to the jay-z like the jay-z is a better engine like no doubt like it's stronger like you can push the bottom end further the oiling is not like you know like like atrocious as these but i'd rather pick an r chassis than like a mark four these cars handle so well like i've sat in the mark fours before and they're cool but they're just big cars you know but the r chassis like you can make the power that you want and you can put it down to the floor that's what's the beauty of i guess the gtr because you can whatever like i feel like with a super at a certain point you put a drag pack and it's all over the place but these cars you don't really gotta because all will drive it's just it just grips all the time which is nice okay and you said if you have the car so what would be potential replacements for this car um since you may not have it like in a year or so or maybe uh, earlier like i said uh mark 4 would be nice i would love to have a jay-z okay. like you know it's it's just i just want to experience i just love that chassis honestly an fd arc 7 <laughs> but I wouldn't have a rotary. I will have an LS swap in it. Oh. Yes. yes. Hey, you're gonna get some people mad with that one. Yeah, well, I love the rotary. I love that chassis, but I feel like people who own those chassis, like, they're like, yeah, it's not a bad chassis, but <laughs> they're like on their third engine. Yeah. But I would love to have like an LS swap, uh, R7, or even, um, no, it'll be the only two, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if, if, if you guys have a Mark IV for sale, um, a Mark IV Supra for sale or a FD RX7 for sale, hit this guy up. Yes. 
um, he would like to uh, see if that if he could buy it off you and maybe replace this but so far my review or you know my experience with the R32 is pretty pretty cool um, I was telling him since it's an older car there's less like sound deadening and like it feels more raw it's a more visceral experience like even hearing the turbo um, so I do like old cars in that regard because I feel like as cars get newer they get softer so you gotta appreciate you know an older JDM car and just take the whole the full experience Back there. <laughs> Lastly, I want to talk about your future plans with the R32. Um, so yeah, let us know. Honestly, um, put it on a standalone and go E. Just make conservative 500 horsepower. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, like the twins are cool. I love the twins, and like you know, there's a debate between twins or single. But I'm a big single guy, and I'll put like a Garrett uh, like G35 900 on it, and mm -hmm. like straight pipe and just make it real <laughs> loud just like t51 r mod just make it super loud like i don't care if it goes faster or not just make it like once you put a single turbo on any car whether it's a jay-z rb uh s55 or whatever yeah. you just open up the exhaust like, a lot you know yeah. that would be the biggest thing single how, turbo how much power would that be on a single turbo um what is it i'm still stock trans so i can't push too much but Probably like I'll probably shoot for like 550 600 around there. Keep it not too much just enough. This was a good um, Experience with the R32 GTR. This is my first time experiencing one and I will say It's very very raw feeling the chassis like you were saying is small. It's like well sorted and balanced um, I'm interested to see how he'll I'm interested to see how it'll be when he like um, Maybe mods it a little bit further. Maybe we could do a build update. Um, it would be pretty cool but as of now, this was a really cool example of an R32 GTR. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.